Hello, I'm excited that you are joining me today about our lesson that talks about the difference between a relation and a function. So this is going to cover topics in the standard 2.1b, and if you want to practice some questions afterwards in Study Islands, you're going to want the topic called Relations versus Functions. So the one thing you always want to keep in mind is our study tips. And so you remember you can record, fast forward, rewind, rewatch these problems as many times as you need to. I highly recommend that you take notes in your math notebook as you're learning. And um, you can always pause at the beginning of a question and then work the question out yourself, see what answer you get, and then rewatch it to see if your thinking is correct or maybe you'll find out where you need to um, work on so that you can get the problems correct. And as you're working through these problems, um, what you want to keep in mind about functions and relations is that a function is a type of relation. So relation is like, is the more broad term and function is more specific. Just like red is more broad, the color, and but you can get into cherry red or apple red or bright red, those get more specific, but they're all still red. So every function is still a relation, it's just a more specific type of relation. And so that'll help you out as we go over the definitions. This is called a fair model, and it's just one way to show a definition for a word. So the word that we're looking at is relation. And the definition for that is a relation is a set of pairs of inputs and output values. And down here we have some examples. So we have ordered pairs, so the X and Y pairs, those are our input and output values. We have an equation, we have a table, and we have a mapping diagram. Those are all different ways that relations can be represented. So the characteristics is there are those multiple ways to represent a relation. We have the ordered pairs, input output table, points on a coordinate plane. We didn't talk about that down here. We have a mapping diagram, equation, and words or sentences. Some things that are not relations is like a number four, which is a constant, an x, which is a variable, or a seven x, a term, that's, that's an expression. Those things are not relations. Then here we talk about what a function is. So if I'm, remember, if I'm going too fast, you can rewind and pause so you can copy this down into your notebook. But the definition of a function is a relation. So a function is an example of a relation where every input has exactly one output. So remember, a lot of times our inputs are x's and outputs are y's. So for every X has exactly one Y is another way you could think of that. Some characteristics of a function is if you draw a vertical line through the graph that touches it more than once, it is not a function. And I'll show you some examples of those. The inputs do not repeat with a different output. So that means inputs, that's our X's, output is our Y. So another way to think about it is our X's do not repeat with a different Y. So down in this corner is some examples. Here we have a set of points. If you look, our X is one, two, three, four. They're not repeating. That's what makes it a function. Here, this is a table. Our X column or our input column have all different numbers. Those X's don't repeat, so it's a function. And then here I have a graph and I drew, drew a red vertical line through it. That red vertical line only touches the graph once, no matter where I move along the graph, so it's a function. Now, these are some non-examples, so these are not functions. This is a mapping diagram, and this is my x's, these are my inputs. So if you look, this negative 2 I have circled, has two arrows coming from it. So that means it's repeated twice. So 
So it's not a function. It doesn't matter how many the Y's have pointing at them. We're only looking at the inputs to decide if it's a function or not. So because this two has arrows going to two different numbers, it's not a function. And then here, I have a graph, so I'm using my vertical line test. I draw a vertical line, and it crosses this graph twice. It touches the graph twice, so this is not a function either. Using the vertical line test, determine if the graph above shows a relation, a function, both a relation and a function, or neither a relation nor a function. So because it's a graph, I'm going to use the vertical line test. Some people call it a pencil test because you could lay a pencil down vertically to see if it's a function or not. If this vertical line, if I can make it touch anywhere on the graph more than once, two or more times, then it's going to be not a function. So here, I place it just, I place it on the graph. And do you see how it touches my blue graph? It touches it here and here. That means it's not a function, it's just a relation. So my answer is going to be A. I'm going to do the same thing with this graph in this next example. I have my vertical line and I'm going to move it along my graph. So far, wherever I move it, it's only touching the graph in one spot. As I move it across the whole graph, remember you could use your pencil, it continues to only touch in the one spot. So because it only touches a vertical line in one spot, it's going to be a function. Now remember, any function is also a relation. So this one is both a function and a relation. Now in this next example, it wants to know which of the following represents a function. I'm looking at a bunch of tables. So remember, a function, your inputs do not repeat. So that means my x's are not going to repeat because x is my input. So in this example, I have a negative 15 and negative 15. My x repeated with different y's. So a is not my answer. In this letter choice B, I have negative 9 and negative 9. My X repeated with different Y's, so B is not my answer. Okay, let's look at C. Let's see if I have any repeating X's here. Negative 15, negative 9, negative 4, negative 4. There's my two that repeat. The Y's are different, so C is not my answer. Let's make sure, let's double check D. Hopefully that's my answer. Negative 15, negative 9, negative 4, positive 4. No repeating. So D is my answer. In this example, I'm looking at tables again. And if I read the question, it says, which of the following represents a relation, not a function? So remember, a function is where the x's do not repeat. So if I want something that is not a function, I want the repeating x's. So I'm first I'm going to look at my x column because those are my inputs, or row here. And so I have negative 9, negative 5, 0, 4. Those are all different inputs, all different x's. So this is going to be a function. So I look at b. Uh, my x row here has negative 9, negative 5, positive 5, and 11. Those are all different numbers, so this is going to be a function also. Letter C. My x row has a 5, negative 5, 11, negative 9. Those are all different inputs again, so this is going to be a function also. Letter D, I have negative 9, negative 5, negative 9, 4. Those negative 9s repeat, so this is not a function. The question wanted which one is not a function, so my answer here is D. 
This question here asks us, does the equation below represent a relation, a function, or both a relation and a function, or neither a relation nor a function? So what we're looking, it just gives us the equation. So if you know what this graph looks like, then you could use the vertical line test. But if you don't know what this graph looks like, the easiest way to do it is to pick any number for x. And I'm going to pick x equals 2. And I'm going to evaluate this equation, this for when x is 2. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to have y equals, and then I'm going to substitute 2 in for x, put it in parentheses, that squared minus 8x, but instead of writing x, I'm going to write a 2. And then I'm going to simplify that. I'm going to do exponents first. So 2 squared is 4 minus, and then the 8 times the 2. Next, in order of operations, is multiplication. So I have 4 minus 8 times 2 is 16, and 4 minus 2 is negative 12. Now, remember, if it's a function, that means that for every x, I get one unique y. So here, I only got one answer for y. I didn't get more than one answer, so that means it is a function. And if it's a function, it's also a relation, so my answer is d. So most of the time, these equations you're going to see are going to be functions. However, if you see something like that's kind of off, very different with y, such as the absolute value of y, that's just a relation. Or if you see oh, the y with an exponent, such as y squared or y cubed, that's going to be just a relation. Or if you see something like plus or minus x, which is really rare, but if you see something like that, then that's also just a relation. Most of the time, if it's just a plain y, it's going to be a relation and a function. And you can always test a point to make sure. In this question, I have a bunch of mapping diagrams. And it wants to know, in the question, which one represents a function? So just so you know how a mapping diagram works, I'm going to take this first choice, w, and put it into a table. So I'm going to use x for my inputs and y's for my outputs. And this first, this 14 here maps to number 9. So that means I'm going to have 14, 9 in my table. And then next I have a 5 mapping to a 6. So I'm going to have a 5 and a 6 in a row in my table. The number 3 maps to negative 2 and a 0. So that means I'm going to have a 3, negative 2, and a 3, 0 in my table. Then my last one is negative 2 maps to 0. So I'm going to have negative 2, 0 in my table. So this one here, if I look at my x column where my inputs are, I have 3's that repeat. So it's not a function because of those repeating threes. And the way I can see that the threes repeat in the mapping diagram is the fact that this three here has two arrows starting at it. So it's not a function. So we're looking at the arrows starting from the input column. We don't care how many, what's going on in the output column when we're deciding a function. Because remember back to our definition, we talked about inputs not repeating. We ne mentioned outputs. So here, we, we're, for this question, we only look at the input column. Okay, so in the, the choice X here, the same thing happens in my output column or I'm sorry, my input column, I have a 9 that has 2 starting from it. So that means that input has 9, 13, and 9 maps to negative 4. So that means it repeats. So x is not a function. In choice y, it happens again. My 5 here maps to 2, and it maps to negative 3. So that it repeats. So 
This input is repeating, so it's not a function. Now in Z, 12 has one arrow, negative 1 has one arrow, 7 has one arrow, and 9 has one arrow. So all of the inputs only have one arrow starting at it, so it is a function. Now some people will look at this 5 and be like, oh, it has two arrows pointing to it, it's not a function. No, your outputs can repeat. We don't care about the outputs repeating. For it to be a function, it's just the inputs that can't repeat. So my answer here is going to be Z. In this last example, they are giving us a set of points and asking us which one is not a function. So remember when you are writing a point, it's X is your first number and Y is your second number. So when I'm looking at my inputs, it's that first number in the coordinate that I care about to decide whether or not it's a function. So in letter A, I have 7, negative 2, 4, and negative 7 as my inputs. <clears throat> Those are all different numbers, so it's going to be a function. Letter B the x coordinates are negative 2, 4, 7, negative 7. Those are all different inputs, so no repeating, so it's going to be a function. Once again in C, I have negative 7, 4, negative 2, and 7. Those are all different numbers, so, my, so this one's also going to be a function. Letter D, my inputs or x numbers are 4, negative 2, 4, negative 7. These 4's repeat, so this one is not a function. The question asks which one's not a function, so my answer here is D. Thank you for joining us today, and I hope you learned something new.